H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus, one-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Welcome to another video of H2K Infosys. In this particular video, we will see the concept of uh, constructors. So constructors are basically used uh, for the initializing of the objects. Generally, if it happens that we have uh, 100 objects in a particular class file, of every uh, object has to be initialized individually. And that takes a lot of time and effort and a lot of time it wasted. So instead of that, if we basically create constructors, the constructor can be referenced or rather can be used by the objects. Uh, and through this particular method, the initialization uh, codes becomes less and it saves time. Now, as far as the concept of constructor is concerned, the constructor is nothing but it helps us in reducing codes. The using constructors, the number of codes will be less. And the major use of constructor is basically to initialize objects. Generally, as I have discussed that if we have objects in a particular class file and there are thousand objects, for example, each individual object has to be initialized. And we have seen how we can initialize objects. And that is tedious and takes a lot of time. Instead of that, we can initialize the objects with the help of constructor, which helps us in reducing time. We will see this particular aspect uh, when we look at the practical examples of constructors. And it is a very important thing that constructor takes the name of the class file. Whatever is the class file name, the name of the constructor will be same. Constructor uses access specifier like public, default, private and protected. Okay, so we can have a public constructor and the name of the constructor will be the name of the class file. We can have a default constructor. Default constructor will not have any keyword. Public constructor will have the keyword called public. Private constructor are also possible. Private constructors will have the keyword called private and protected constructor will have the keyword called protected. Now, these access specifiers are not only used in constructors, they can be used in global variables and these, these can be used in your methods also. Now, until now, I have not discussed what is the meaning of public, default, private and protected. Public means uh, we can call that particular constructor or global variable or uh, that particular method in the same package or across different packages default constructor or default variable global variables or default method means it can be called inside the classes present in the same package a private constructor or a private global variable or a private method means that method or that global variable or that constructor can be used in the class in which it is created there might be more than one class in a particular package so if it is a private constructor or a private global variable or a private method, it can be used only in the class in which it is created, nowhere else. A protected constructor or a protected variable, global variable or a protected method can be used inside a parent-child class of the same package. Okay, so I am just defining you. What do you mean by public, default, private, protected? I had kept it... Uh, uh, to be discussed at this point of time because this is now the time coming on to understand what is the meaning of public default private and protected but as far as examples of constructor is concerned i will restrict myself to public constructors when i basically take a session on encapsulation then i'll take you, you through the different other access specifiers and see its usage constructor do not have any return type now methods do have return type like a void or integer or boolean or character or long or whatever it is so what happens is that uh, constructor will not have the return type as a whole okay <clears throat> secondly 
constructor do not have the concept of static or non-static i cannot say i cannot say that a constructor is static or non-static there is no concept of static or non-static in a constructor similarly if you go further ahead and understand the theoretical knowledge of constructors how does the syntax of a constructor look so it will have an access specifier followed by the name of the class file because constructor takes the name of the class file followed by a parenthesis and then a opening curly brace and a closing curly brace and within the opening and closing curly brace you can have the body of the constructor and the body can be anything body of the constructor means the statements or the codes can be written within the body of the constructor for example let's say there's a class file called as constructor underscore knowledge then this class file will can have a constructor as public which is nothing but the access specifier followed by the class file name followed by the parenthesis followed by the opening and the closing curly brace this is how a constructor looks like now going forward we can have more than one constructor in a class file the only rule is that you should have different arguments so a constructor can have arguments within the parenthesis which is just present after the name of the constructor and the name of the constructor is the name of the class file so if we can have different arguments we can have more than one constructor in a particular class file now in this particular constructor example this is a no argument constructor because there is no argument defined for this particular constructor and where are the arguments of the parameters defined within the parenthesis just followed by the constructor name and the constructor name out here is constructor underscore knowledge so that means the same concept of overloading comes into effect in your constructor too like in your functions functions can have the same name but different argument types similarly constructors can have the same name but the argument types of a constructor in a particular class file should be different and that precisely comes to the fact that constructor also supports the overloading concept let's go ahead and discuss other theoretical parts of constructors if we have the same argument type constructor in a class file the compiler will show syntax error so we cannot have same, same argument constructor in a specific class file if we have different argument constructors in a specific class file it will be accepted by the compiler and that's the concept of our overloading the this concept of same name constructor with different argument types is the concept of overloading and overloading is the concept of polymorphism we have discussed that every constructor is independent of each other that means in other words we can say that constructors have the same hierarchy we cannot create a constructor inside another constructor the compiler will show you a error we cannot create a constructor inside a method of a class file and that is why every constructor is independent of each other and that is what i have defined in this particular point cannot create constructor inside functions and method independency of the constructor means it is independent of the functions and method that means it cannot be created inside a function body or a method body that's about it about constructor thanks for watching this particular video thank you very much